Hello everyone, thank you for today's uh, third and final video. So doing it on Summer's Watch for today's third video. So we're going to go through all GFS on Summer members. There's a third of them to get through, as well as the operational run. So I shall get on that for you very shortly. And I'm going to try and rattle through this in 20 minutes. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, quickly we get through it, won't it? Uh, the uh, first year release date was the uh, final ECM Death 30 day look of the year. That's going to be rested now until the first Tuesday of January. I have no idea what day that will be, but the first Tuesday of January will be the day that we have uh, the return of the ECM Death 30 day look uh, And also 10 to 14 day today as well, of course. So uh, please check out. Uh, check out uh, all of today's videos when you have done with this one. Okay, so we're at uh, westcentral.d uh, for this. Uh, I'm going to start off with GFS Operational Run, 12 uh, So this is what it's showing for uh, starting on Christmas Day uh, with this. It's going to start off on Christmas Day for all of these ensemble members. So uh, we begin uh, with a ridge of high pressure through the country within a cold uh, northerly air mass with our GFS 12Z Operational Run. So, as we go from, uh, like, Boxy Day 27 to 7, low pressure dives in from the north. So, uh, that low pressure, of course, pushes south with the jet stream. High pressure builds on its backside in towards Iceland. And we pull in, like, an east to north easy wind. That looks like a bit of a north easy blast, doesn't it? So, that could bring some snow between Christmas and the New Year. Uh, looks like I've got another low pressure diving in here uh, around New Year's Day. Could that bring us some New Year snow? Maybe it could. Uh, so again, low pressure dives in on this GFS operation run uh, over the New Year. Keeps the cold weather going. And then running up to the end of the GFS run, which gets us today to the 7th of January. Just going a little bit milder then uh, on the GFS 12Z operational. Just starting to pull up some milder winds from southwest, turning unsettled and turning wetter and windy, uh, windier as well. I'm going to show you the uh, stratosphere forecast um, at 10 HPA over North Pole from that GFS uh, 12Z operational. So uh, this is at metroseal.fl. We'll go back to West Central and say, have a look at the ensemble members. But look what happens here. Uh, this is that warming that we've been talking about in videos over the past few days. Stratospheric warming uh, reaching sudden stratospheric warming uh, levels by the end of the year. That's the 30th of December. Very significant warming of stratosphere going on over Siberia. Um, and then look what happens is going through the first week of January. So the polar vortex, which is the blue colour, has been stretched and stretched and stretched to, to breaking point. A second warming occurring over the Atlantic, UK and uh, Europe as well. And look at this, look at this, look at this. A split of the polar vortex taking place out on the GFS 12Z operation run. A, a split of the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere. One lobe going off into, like, um, Northern Europe and Western Russia. Another lobe going off into North America and, uh, and Canada. And that is a definite, definitive split of polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere. How very interesting is that, everybody, from GFS 12Z. Right, let's start going through these um, ensemble members then. So we're going to start off with the control. Is GFS control run. Uh, so the control run is uh, run at a slightly lower resolution to the operational run, uh, but at a higher resolution to all other ensemble members. And last year or something, this will probably be in uh, the GFS operational run. Right, so Christmas Day, uh, we've a ridge of high pressure. It could be dry and pretty cold for Christmas Day. Uh, then low pressure dies in from the north as we go between Christmas and the New Year. We pull winds into the northeast, gets colder, and there will be a risk of wintry weather as well. Moving up to New Year, uh, we keep low pressure to our south. High pressure continues continue to be blocking in the North Atlantic up towards Greenland and Iceland. Winds remaining from uh, east north east direction. That still looks cold and wintry from the GFS control run. As we move on into further into the first week of January, uh, possibly introducing something a little bit milder from the west. Um, although, again, having said that, it looks like this low pressure to the north Scotland will probably dive southwards again and pull wind back into the north, actually, there. I wouldn't be at all surprised uh, if it did. So that is the uh, GFS control room. On side member number one, uh, has a ridge of high pressure over country uh, on, uh, on Christmas Day, so it's going to be made dry 
and cold. Then low pressure will come diving in from the north uh, from Boxing Day 27th of uh, December. Bring heavy rain initially and possibly some snow as it pulls the wind into that cold northerly. Uh, moving up towards uh, the new year, we stay cold with trough low pressure over the country. Lots of northern blocking. Uh, with this one uh, as well, high pressure centred around Greenland. And so just keeping things cold and blocked. We've got some member no one. So having a go at turning milder here uh, on the 5th of January, trying to bring up some more air from the southwest, but it is struggling. Much of Northern Britain is still within cold air and uh, east winds as well. That could be a proper old snow event taking place there. Eventually, some member no one does get there and, and introduces something minor from the southwest. On some member number two, uh, looks dry and cold for. Christmas Day, and then low pressure dies in from the north as we go between Christmas and the New Year, we put in cold northerly winds, and there could be some snow to Christmas and uh, between the New Year as well. Another low pressure is dying south, look at that one, another low pressure dying south, this one affecting more western parts of the country, but keeping it cold, uh, keeping wind in from an east or northeast direction, and then we build high pressure in. Um, so that would be cold. I mean, that's within cold air, turning drier, but but would still be cold. And then as we get to the end of ensemble member number two, it looks like you have a go at pushing down another northerly blast. Wow, how exciting is that one? Ensemble member number three, uh, main dry and cold for Christmas Day. Uh, low pressure comes diving in from the north as we go uh, between uh, Christmas and the New Year. We're going to pull in uh, cold northerly winds during Christmas week. There comes some snow around as well. Up to New Year, stays cold. Cold and blocked. High pressure is blocking the North Atlantic. Low pressure is over the UK and Ireland. There could be more snow coming in with that early in January. Uh, is it ever going to pull in anything mild? Let's have a look and see what happens. Not really with Kingman Ridge going. Up to the end on some member, on some member number three, uh, but possibly going a little bit milder right at the very end by the 7th of January. On some member number four is mainly dry and cold for Christmas Day, but low pressure will die southwards on uh, Boxing Day and it will bring rain and eventually much colder air and some snow uh, potentially with it as well. We go between Christmas and the New Year and we're staying cold uh, with winds continuing to be from a northerly direction, uh, blocking up towards Greenland and Iceland. Um, as we're going to the open of January, we're going to pull up something milder from the southwest. This, is going to, this one is going to turn us milder. This is going to pull up southwest winds. So, member number four pulls up southwest winds by the 7th of January, uh, a new year four. On some member number five, uh, mainly dry and quite cold for Christmas Day. Low pressure will then dive in from the north. We'll have low pressure diving in from the north. It will pull wind into the north and from to the northeast. Between Christmas and New Year, and there could be some snow involved in that. Another low pressure is going to come diving southwards, I think, with this ensemble member uh, keeping it generally cold into the opening days of January. And then high pressure looks like it's going to have to go reaching to Scandinavia and trying to get wind into the east. So this keeps us cold right the way up to the 7th of January. This one keeps us cold with high pressure to our north and winds in from an easy direction. On some member number seven, uh, on some member six, I should say, looks like this. Uh, mainly dry and quite cold. For Christmas Day, getting ahead of myself. Low pressure and dies in uh, across the country between uh, Christmas and the New Year and will turn wind into the east. Could be cold and wintry then. Uh, New Year's Eve has a Scandinavian high and an Easterly wind. How interesting. That could bring snow to the east for New Year. And then low pressure is going to have a go at dislodging that block and the cold air as we go into the open days of January. So that could be a snow event as uh, low pressure is struggling to push in uh, across the country. That's how we finish up. Still basically with a Scandinavian high in control and winds in from the east. There's a very deep cold pool uh, across Eastern Europe as well. So if the wind was to stay easterly much longer, we would start to uh, drag in a beach from the east there. Ensemble member six. Ensemble member number seven. Uh, mainly dry and quite cold uh, between uh, uh, on Christmas Day. I mean, low pressure dies in from the north. Turns us unsettled and keeps us cold uh, between Christmas and the New Year. Low pressure will be in from the north with secondary features rotating around it. So rain and or snow possible. 
between Christmas and the New Year. And then heading off into the opening days of January, the heights are rising to our east. So I think this is going to have a go at building up a Scandinavian high. And that basically keeps us cold, but turns out to be through the first week of January. On top of number number eight uh, will be mainly dry and quite cold for Christmas Day. Then low pressure will dive southwards through the country, bringing heavy rain, gale force winds, and also the chance of some snow uh, as well, as winds will be turning in to uh, the north and to the northeast uh, as well. Then another low pressure comes diving in from the north. Look at this. Uh, low pressure is around uh, southern Greenland there on the 30th of December. Look where that low pressure is. We go through to New Year's evening to New Year's Day. That could bring a New Year snow event. Could we have a snow event on New Year's Eve to New Year's Day from that diving low? Uh, that gets out of the way uh, and then high pressure builds in behind it. That high is going to be uh, trying to get south Scandinavia. So this keeps it cold through the first week of January. On some member number seven, keeps it cold to the first week of, uh, through the first week of January with winds in from the east, cold, dry and frosty. Ensemble member number nine uh, looks like that. Uh, and again, it just looks very, very unsettled between Christmas and New Year. Cold, wet, uh, rain and or snow. Winds will be in from a northerly uh, direction. Lots of blocking with this one around the New Year. And lots of northern blocking around Greenland and Iceland. How exciting is that? And it's going to pull in like another northerly shot. Look at this. Uh, another really cold blast trying to move down from the north. That's a big snow event there. Big snow event there. Around 6th, 7th of January from that area of low pressure engaging with this northerly plunge. This was like a prolonged cold spell, doesn't it, in the GFS ensembles. Um, ensemble member number 10. It's going to be mostly dry, cold and frosty uh, around Christmas Day. And then it's going to turn uh, cold and unsettled between the Christmas and the New Year. Uh, low pressure will be bring rain and snow. Winds will be in from the north and from the northeast. And this one, I think, is going to try and keep it cold as well. Although, uh, pulling winds into the south. It's trying to raise heights over Scandinavia. But actually, this one is a milder ensemble member through the first week of January. So that will just turn things a little bit milder through the first week of January. Ensemble member number 11 uh, looks like that. So so, uh, again, we are in for uh, a mainly dry but cold Christmas day. Then turns unsettled and cold between Christmas and the New Year. There could be some rain and some snow uh, around between Christmas and the New Year with winds in from a north or easterly direction. Into early January, high pressure will bring uh, dry and cold weather initially, and then we're pulling something milder from off the Atlantic Ocean. So, ensemble member number 11 is going to turn us uh, milder, wetter, and windier. Although, by the time we finish ensemble member number 11 on the 7th of January, it looks like we're going back to square one. I think this low pressure is diving southwards as a height, so we're going to rise uh, again into uh, towards Greenland. Ensemble member number 12 looks mostly dry and quite cold uh, on Christmas Day. And then unsettled and calm between Christmas and New Year. They are all going for this diving low between Christmas and the New Year. None of them are deviating from that. Uh, then our Sol Member 12 builds up a big uh, uh, blocking feature in the North Atlantic and around Greenland Ice as well. And another northerly blast there. Look at another northerly blast around the 3rd of January. Very cold with that one. Um, and then the Atlantic, I think, is going to have a go at getting rid of that. But it's probably going to end up as a snow event as the low pressure is struggling against cold and the block. Could we have New Year blizzards on our hands here? Uh, on top of member 13, uh, mainly dry and quite cold for Christmas Day. And low pressure drops in from the north. And we're pulling cold northerly winds and chance some snow between Christmas and the New Year. Another low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic uh, around the New Year. That could bring some New Year's snow. Don't rule out the chance of some snow on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Then high pressure builds in behind that turns us dry and cold uh, with easterly winds developing. And of course that's going to be mostly dry and frosty under that area of high pressure. But still cold. Ensemble member number 14 is going to drop the low pressure in from the north uh, between Christmas and the New Year and will pull in uh, northeasterly winds so it will be cold, there will be a risk of rain and snow in places. It will stay cold into early January as well. We have ensemble member number 14. In fact, it stays cold right to the very end. Although we have got wind a little bit from a southerly direction there by 7th of January, 
it's basically still cold, dry, and frosty that with the air coming in from off the uh, continent. On summer number 15, we're halfway through uh, now. Uh, looks like this. So, uh, once again, there's going to be a lot of dry weather for Christmas Day. Then low pressure will uh, drop in from the north, turning us very uh, unsettled with heavy rain, severe gale force winds, and the chance of snow uh, coming in uh, with that as well. Very blocked. Very, very blocked. And so remember number 15 uh, into the new year with the risk of more uh, rain and or snow in places. Finishes up. Looks like going to pull down a renewed northerly shot there on the 7th of January. Ensemble member number 16. Uh, if you're enjoying this Ensemble's Watch, by the way, please smash your like button. Let us know in the comments what you think as well. And make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Ensemble member number 16 will drop low pressure in from the north between Christmas and New Year. Looking cold and unsettled with that area of low pressure. And winds will turn into the east uh, and it's going to stay cold into the New Year. Uh, very blocked with this one. Scandinavian high ridging to light uh, Iceland. That sort of area. So very cold with winds in from the east. There could be further snow potential coming in with that uh, as well. And uh, that one keeps us cold right way through to 7th of January. Cold and blocked with that one once again. So I'm number 17. We're going to look like uh, this. So many dry and quite cold for Christmas Day. Then low pressure will drop in from the north. It's going to be very unsettled with heavy rain, uh, severe gales, and also a chance of snow between Christmas and the New Year as well. I mean, high pressure will develop over Scandinavia and keep us cold up towards the New Year. I think this one is going to try and turn us milder, uh, bringing in westerly winds uh, through the first week of January. So this is one of the ones that's going to go milder. That goes milder with westerly winds for the first week of January. We're on Psalm 17. Uh, number 18 uh, will, again, uh, drop the low pressure in from the north. Uh, amazing uh, consistency on this low pressure dropping in from the north. In what is quite an unusual pattern so you would expect some deviation within some of these ensemble members with this idea but but they're all going for it they're all dropping low pressure in from the north between christmas and the new year and this one uh you know this one looks very cold so that's heavy snow probably coming in from the atlantic there on the 4th of january uh, again from a diving low high pressure sent over scandinavia winds in from the east that one keeps us cold right the way up to 7th of january uh ensemble member number nine 19 uh, will again drop that low pressure in from the north between Christmas and New Year. It'll bring the risk of heavy rain, severe gales, and the chance of some snow as well. Uh, and then heading into the early days of January, again, this one is a little bit less cold, um, but, but overall still quite blocked. And, and as we come to the end of that one, we're actually building up the Scandinavian high back to Siberian high, and that one is bringing in easy winds uh, for the 7th of January as well. Uh, ensemble member number 20. If you like mild weather, these are not very good charts, everybody who likes mild weather. And some people do prefer it mild. Uh, so, uh, we get through to the uh, 29th of December. We're in cold northerly winds from that low pressure that's dropped in from uh, the north. And low pressure has a go coming up from the south around the New Year. That could bring New Year's Day snow, particularly to England and Wales. How exciting would that be? Uh, and then we go through into uh, the first week of January, and it does try and pull in something a little bit minor from off the Atlantic Ocean. I saw them number 21. Uh, is going to drop that low pressure in from the north. Rather than seeing, I know that they're going to drop, they're all dropping this low pressure in from the north. So we haven't seen one yet that doesn't do that. And that low dropping in from the north around the 27th, 28th of December is the trigger then uh, for, for the cold weather that follows. Is this going to drop the second low in from the north? Yes, it is. So uh, here we go around uh, 30th, 31st of December. The next low from Iceland dropping in from the north, that could bring... Uh, another shot of cold air and snow with it. And then this one is going to turn us milder for the first week of January. This one, number 21, does re-establish a mild westerly course. Ensemble member number 22. Uh, again, we'll see the low pressure dropping in from the north as we go between the Christmas period and uh, up to the New Year. That one is struggling to get the normally down quite as much, I think. So that was a little bit milder between Christmas and the New Year, but still broadly dropping that low pressure. It does eventually get, get us cold anyway. Um, so through the opening days of January, the wind is in from the east, and, and we're looking cold uh, there right way through the first week of January. Uh, that's how we finish up. Um, so a bit of a battle going on. That could be some snow. On some member, number 23. Uh, again, let's see what 
what this one's going to do. That drops a low pressure in from the north very clearly. That low pressure clears away to our east and pulls in cold uh, northerly and northeast winds as well. And it keeps us cold really uh, right way through into the opening days of January. So plenty of potential. Look at the blocking we've got with that. Look at the blocking with that. Still around Greenland in the first week of January. Plenty of potential for snow. That's a prolonged cold and snowy spell there uh, with ensemble member number 23. Incredible. That, that keeps us cold right way to the very, very end. I mean really cold right way to the very end. Uh, ensemble member number 24. Uh, again, same idea. That low pressure will drop in from the north. It'll bring risk of rain and snow with it. Uh, and then another low looks like it's going to drop in from the north there it comes around the, around new year that could be a new year's eve uh, sort of snow event there across the country uh from new year's eve to new year's day uh been a long time since we had an snow event for a new year's eve and new year's day but that could be it uh if that low pressure does drop in uh, and then we go through to the first week of uh, January. It looks like we're building up the Scandinavian side being high. We've got some warm air infection going on. So that could be temporarily milder. But I think very quickly that will get wind into the east. Ensemble member number 25. Uh, again, it's going to look like this. So a uh, low pressure will be plunging southwards between the Christmas period and the New Year period. It's going to keep us cold and blocked, I think, uh, right way to the end. High pressure will dominate, turning us frosty first week of January um, and by the end it looks like high pressure is trying to get itself back to Greenland uh, again these are incredible charts everybody it's been years and years and years since we have seen anything like this uh, during the winter period uh, low pressure drops in uh, with ensemble number 26, uh, so mainly dry and uh, mainly unsettled between Christmas and New Year and cold as well. Winds are going to be in from an easy direction. There could be some rain and some snow in with that too. And um, then we head up between uh, into the first week of January. Again, another low is diving southwards there. Another low dives southwards through the first week of January. King is generally cold and quite wintry, really, uh, all the way up to the end of that uh, ensemble member. We are trying to pull in something a little bit milder then uh, by the end. Uh, number 27, uh, again, it's going to do the same idea. Low pressure will drop in from north to Christmas New Year. Be cold and unsettled. And then as we run on into the first week of January, it stays cold. Winds remaining. Uh, and so blocked. So much blocking as well. So winds remaining from a cold northerly or easterly source throughout on Psalm number 27. A very prolonged cold spell is, is set up there. On Psalm number 28, we come towards the end now, um, will be cold between Christmas and the New Year with winds in from a northeasterly uh, direction. It's going to stay cold uh, into the opening days of January, I think. Maybe a little bit milder, actually, there, uh, through the New Year. So this one turns a little bit milder temporarily around the New Year, and then pulls something colder back in from the north uh, once again through the first week of January. Still looking cold right at the very end. On some number 29, uh, penultimately, we'll see the low pressure uh, digging uh, southeastwards uh, through the country between Christmas and New Year. Winds will be in from a northerly direction. Uh, but it goes a bit milder. It looks like it's going to go a bit milder uh, for a time. But it is building high pressure of Scandinavia. Uh, and so this looks like it's going to unleash the beast. This is the beast from the east being unleashed through the first week of January. Look at that, everybody. Look how far east those... Um, those easy wings are coming from right from the Urals, coming right from the Urals there, 384 hours, and look how deep the cold pool is to the east. That one is unleashing the beastly easterly by the 7th of January. And then finally, we've got ensemble member 13, which looks mainly dry but quite cold for uh, Christmas Day. Then low pressure uh, drops in from the north in Christmas of Baduya. It turns cold and unsettled. And then as we run on into the New Year, another low pressure looks like it's diving southwards around New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. That could bring more snow and a renewed northerly push with it. And then high pressure uh, builds over the country, turns us mainly dry but frosty. And as we come to the end of our summer number 30, looks like we're going to have a go at taking high pressure back up to Greenland and renewing the cold weather once again. The last thing I'll show you is the GFS Ensemble Graph. Let's have a look at that. We'll look at Barrow in Furnace today as the last place that we looked at in today's 10 to 14 day. -er. So there it is. Uh, you know, uh, pretty much cold from beginning to end. 
Um, and and yeah, so so that's it. It's very little more, you know, very little you can say other than it's a cold outlook. And look how many precipitation spikes there are as well. Loads of precipitation spikes showing that as it's going to be cold, there will also be the risk of snow being involved uh, with this as well. Absolutely incredible set of ensembles. If you enjoyed this ensembles watch, please smash your like button. Let's know in the comments what you think. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends, family, everybody else about Gals Let's Get them to subscribe as well. And we're going to bring you more uh, weather news in the days ahead about all of this cold weather and snow. So thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. And I'll see you tomorrow with uh, with like updates. I'll be arriving after ten o'clock tomorrow as well. Uh, by the way, so so uh, lots and lots to look forward to. But from Simon's watch, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.